Well, every Sunday we get to be in the light as a community together. It's pretty amazing of the rainbow is over us, it always is. So I feel so privileged to just be here this morning and for the live streamers, for everyone here, just the idea of who we are and how we show up. So today the, um, the talk is on embracing the light and this photon goes into a hotel and checks in. And he checks into the hotel and the bellhop runs up and says, can I help you carry your luggage? And the photon says, don't worry about it. It's okay, I'm traveling light. <laughs> right. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about this morning is traveling light, that we are Photons, we are the particles of light. We're the very expressions of the level and the love and the compassion and wisdom of God. And it's our work to be that in the world, to be the rainbow, to see the light, to know that we carry that within us. And because we do, we have power. So this morning in Traveling Light, Jesus said, we are the light of the world. And in religious science, we know we are that light. And that consciousness, in, in our faith and in our understanding, consciousness means something to us. It means the ideas that we hold affect the outcome of our lives, personally and collectively. So when we start embracing the idea that we're the light, something shifts, something changes as our consciousness changes. So today I wanted to talk about light in terms of visibility, illumination, and enlightenment. In visibility, you can see something. If something becomes visible, all of a sudden, you see it. You know that old hymn, I see the light? You didn't see it before. Something expansive has happened in your consciousness to allow for a new way to see things. And when we see things, when we see that we are the light, we stop telling the story of who we're not. We start telling a different story. We start living from a different idea that we are that very light of God here to express itself, to illumine the darkness, to bring forth something greater than we knew. So I had to leave a tradition, I, I had to expand my vision in a tradition that had limitations for me, telling me that my faith was the great faith and the only faith and all, uh, that I might be going to a fiery furnace. That's where I stopped. That was a lie. <laughs> I'm not going there. But anyway, I had to expand and I didn't even know there were other options until I came to a New Thought Church and all of a sudden I heard something that rang so true to myself, so true to something that I deeply know about myself and about each one of us and about all of life. And when that happened, all of a sudden I could see more, the light became visible to me. And where my fears were, I was willing to let them go. And although there was some pressure in that transition, because there's always a transition when you have a new vision and you have a long history in your old story and you're going to your new story, you have to work through that transition. And the way that we do it is by realigning our thinking with a new idea and becoming aware when that old idea comes in that it's not the truth of who I am right now. So we're expanding, we're giving ourselves to a new vision. Ernest Holmes said, life is the passing of spirit into form. All emerges from the one whose being is ever present, whose life is manifest through all creation. This is the belief. God's life is manifest through all creation. And we open ourselves to have that vision so we start to see it. We start to believe it. It isn't this is good and that is bad and this is something and this is something else. In all of creation, there is no absence of God. 
therefore no absence of good. So once we hold that idea, there's no absence of good, when you're in the middle of what looks bad, there's a transition, there's a way that we move our consciousness to truth. I appreciate the meditation today, Reverend Sandy, to just breathe, not to ask for anything, but just to be who we truly are. It takes consciousness to accept that we are the light of the world. Jesus was the evolutionary leap into who we are. He was the voice that allowed people to hear, I am the light of the world. It, in his time, it was about one person. Now we understand, as our vision expands, we are the light of the world. We are here to express that light. And that's our work to do as religious scientists. In illumination, um, the light starts to shine through you. You start to illuminate. All of a sudden, you, you're shining. You're taking that truth and letting it come through you, but not only through you, but as you. And that's a whole another level of consciousness. When you first get the idea, spirits working through me, you're really expanding, but you're really expanding when you say it's happening as me. Because the moment you say it is as me, you own your own power. It is as me. I have power. I have agency in my life and in the world. And we embrace that idea, and then we start incorporating it. And this week, as I was getting ready for the talk, I was thinking about light and the language of light. And I read about Leonardo da Vinci, who, when he started painting, he specifically highlight it with light. He put light around the real focus of the painting. So he would take a painting, and there would be lots of things in the background, there'd be lots of people, but like taking the Last Supper, he highlights Jesus in the picture because it's the main focus. And I was thinking of my life, that there's so many things in the background, so many things going on, people eating, people sitting on the chairs. I was looking at that painting and understanding for myself that what I highlight when I go into my da Vinci, as I call it, when I highlight something, that gives it focus. So thinking about us, what are we highlighting in our life? What's working is the best thing that God is present is the highlight. That's where we start painting and putting illumination and putting light around that. And there can be other things in the picture, but by lighting something, you bring focus to that subject. If you have a special issue in your life you're working on right now, health, relationships, finances, whatever it is, finding, painting in your picture light around where the fear is, light around where you pull back, light when we start to shrink. Because we're unique and we're here to express. Architecture in the Middle Ages was all about light. The cathedrals were built so there was no obstruction of light. Those big buildings, they wanted the light to come in on every angle and they believed that the more light in the cathedral, the more enlightened the congregation would be because there would be a no obstruction. And so the language of light is everywhere in every event, every situation, every art. And then in all religions from menorahs to Christmas lights to the Hindu festival of lights, light is always, always part of religious ceremony because we recognize there is something greater than we are, but expresses in and through and as our very life. And so that light lumens up. So right now, the word unique comes to me because each of us, ha each of us has a way. We're all artists and we're all architects of our life. We're really here to design our lives. And collectively, when we come into a collective understanding, the expression of light intensifies. I love Marianne Williamson's quote, the one that says, we're more afraid of our light than we are of the darkness. 
Because once we claim that light, we have to own our own power. Once we claim that light, we have to say that in the midst of all of the things that are going on, that we have something that we want to do. We have something to say. And it's so interesting because just culturally, listen, these days are very challenging for me, and I'm sure for you. We've been through the Ukraine. We've been through the hearings. We're now in Roe versus Wade. There's a lot of stuff up. And in the middle of that, in all of that, we're called to be the light, to be inclusive of all things, and to let things find their way. Once I feel, and I've come from a tradition, so I know not to do this, but once I feel my way is the right way, I'm off track. I am off track. Sometimes that's a fight for me. If you understand that, when you feel passionate about something, you feel, oh boy. There is an exercise, and in all the cultural stories right now, I keep hearing, and I've taken an oath. Well, I've taken an oath, and we've taken an oath as religious scientists to hold the light, to believe that this is a world that works for everyone, and that if we open our vision and we let it expand and know that we're in an evolutionary process, that things will come out right because there is no absence of good. There is no absence of God. And most of us have lived long enough to understand we were right when we were 25, we feel right now. I love that Cat Stevens song. You know the Cat St Stevens song he sings to his father, and he tells you know his father, blah, 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 and now he's an older man, and he says, God, my dad might have been right. <laughs> Very powerful stuff. So in illumination, just allowing yourself to be illuminated, to let your light shine, to take it in the place that you know needs your love, a place that needs your compassion, a place that needs your healing. It might be to yourself, to your family, to someone, to the world. I'm always holding that for our, a world that works for everyone. But closer, when it's really closer and I have to go through the process of illumination, Holding the light in as we do and will do on the fourth Sunday of every month is prayerfully. That's our work, to prayerfully. And prayerfully means to take a breath and remember who we are and to own our power and to be able to speak our word, which is means, translated, that our consciousness, when we speak the truth, the truth always heals. It always heals us in a loving way, in the right way. So just allowing yourself to be the illumination. And then enlightenment, that's the end of the road. They say, you know, like, we've all been striving for enlightenment. We want to see the light. We want to be the light. And being the light is enlightenment. And during these times, just collectively, it's our work. We are called, we're all here at this time when everything is turning upside down to come out right. And we have to be expansive enough, enlightened enough to be able to hold this and that at the same time, knowing that God is in the midst of this. And every time, I can only speak for myself, every time I go into that I think I know what's happening, something else unfolds and there's a new revelation. How many times in your own life you thought you had it down and some surprise out of the blue, something happened and you went, oh, had no idea, and it always works for good. I love what Ernest Holmes says. He says, life is spirit in manifestation. We call this evolution. Since the idea is still unfolding, it appears as though we live in an imperfect universe. Evolution is the time and the process through which an idea unfolds to a higher state of manifestation. We are in the process of evolution. We're evolving. And the next 
iteration of who we are is that Christ enlightened Buddha consciousness. And what we have to do to have that is to be love, forgiveness, compassion, and wisdom. And even though we know, we think we know all of that in the enlightened state, that's where we're going to be. And so it's the call on us, especially us as religious scientists. We never say we're the way. OK, we say it occasionally, <laughs> maybe every Sunday, but whatever. But we keep, the, we keep it open. We keep it open. Open at the top. That's what Ernest Holmes used to say. Open at the top. And that's what we are. Um, we're asking for the world to evolve. And we're the agents of evolution. I feel very privileged to be in this community, to be in a community linked across the planet with all kinds of people, with all kinds of traditions that hold the idea of love, compassion, forgiveness, and are allowing, whether they're waiting for Jesus or the unfoldment of Buddha or whatever we're waiting for, it's already here. It's sitting right in our seats, right where you are. You are it. I just invite you to take the words of this talk and apply it to the places in your own life that you need to shed light on. I have places in my own life I need to put the, the light there. When I get too involved in looking at the outer realms, I have to remove myself and go into a prayerful space that reminds myself there is one life. That life is God. That life is my life right now. It brings me back to a state of being able to breathe and settle in to who I truly am. You know, there's a 2,000-year-old prayer, and I've been saying it since I've been five years old, and it ends with, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. I sincerely pray that prayer almost every day, and I join you in the hearts to have that prayer, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. And if we do that, we'll be traveling light. Photon. <laughs>